Welcome in everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about TIG welding open root pipe with an absolute terrible fit up. And as always guys, the best way that you can show support to us as we make two videos a week every single week for the foreseeable future is just making sure that you help us out by sharing, liking, subscribing, commenting, doing everything you can to help engage with us. We're gonna be doing our best to answer any comments coming through. And also check out all the links that we have in the description below. We work with a lot of partners and these videos, as you probably can tell, are sponsored. I wanna be completely open with that. Get it over with. Our partners like Lincoln Electric, Outlaw Leather, PIP, Abacor Benzel, all these good folks help us with equipment to show you all and to help us keep making all this great content so now that that's all said and done let's get into today's piece of pipe and golly is it bad now if you're new to TIG you, you maybe you're getting in welding school and you started on play or maybe you're moving into pipe let me just give you this little tidbit of advice focus on your prep focus on your fit you will learn a lot easier on a good prep and a good fit the way you'd like to. And if I give my personal preference on a fit in any position, TIG welding on pipe, it's a 532 gap, no land. <laughs> Outside of that, if you're working in the field and you come across something like this, okay, this, is, this isn't worst case scenario, believe it or not. The main things that are the issues is the tight gap on one side and the absolute massive gap on the other. Now, both of these pose a problems in order to get the right kind of root that you're supposed to have. Same thing with high-low. So if you don't know what high-low is, it is the mismatched uh, fit-up alignment of the pipe. This is what's called a high-low gauge. And you stick it in the bevel and then it pulls up and then you can see just how far out, I don't know if y'all can see that, zoom it in, just how far out of alignment this piece of pipe is in a couple spots. If you come across this, the point I'm trying to make, if you know you can weld it is one thing, but should you is another, especially if it's x-ray. And with this much high-low, a welder should not even touch that. Call quality control over and you say, hey, check this out. If quality says that the fit is okay to weld, then the fit's okay to weld. If you're not comfortable welding it, then you better speak up or you better try your damnedest. And that's what this video is gonna be about. Uh, we're gonna try our damnedest to put a bead in this piece of pipe with as much high-low and gap changes, and then we're gonna walk you through how we get it in. Before we strike an arc, let's go over the setup today. My go-to TIG Torch setup for pretty much anything is just gonna be the uh, Jumbo number 10 gas lens. Usually get all my consumables and everything from uh, these folks at Abacor Benzel. Same thing with their tungsten, running some E3 one eighth tungsten. Uh, my Cayman 1600s are the go-to for pretty much all TIG welding pipe goes. I uh, got our Outlaw leather hood, and then we moved into the Sprinter 180 SI. Uh, this is your TIG and stick machine. We got our Lincoln Electric 70S6 TIG wire one eighth. Probably gonna put this bead in at a number of different amperages. We are going to weld it in position. I got it at 95 amps. That might change. We're running on lift TIG, so it's kind of like scratch start. We're not running any remotes or anything. This is the setup. Um, yeah, it'll get suited up. Let's start on this thing. So one of the first things we got to do is just evaluate the weld that we're walking up on. This one right now, we've got it fixed in position. We've got the really tight gap on the top. This Y, this gap's probably close to a 16th of an inch and there's about a 16th of an inch of high-low on the top. But that's not where the big problems are. The tights, tight on top is actually quite okay. And, uh, but the bottom here, I can, I mean, that's at least a quarter of an inch gap. We've got a lot of wiggle room for our 1 8 wire. Unfortunately, I'd like to say it's not the worst I've seen, but we're gonna start on this bottom tack and work our way up. I actually do prefer a wider gap on the bottom. Gravity wants to drop and make things fall out on the top. So it's kind of nice having something uh, tighter on the top versus on the bottom. Uh, so I'm gonna make it work to my advantage. I am gonna have a grinder on deck and I'm gonna try to get you a good close-up look of how we're gonna put this bead in with such a bad gap. It's hard to do because I got this camera in the way, but I wanted to at least show you the method of the madness before I actually strike an arc. We've got a lot of wiggle room for this eighth inch wire, right? And I might freehand the bottom a little bit and then I'll start to walk in the cup there's not a whole lot of high-low. The important thing is, is we just put enough metal down here. This is on the bottom. Things are gonna wanna lay flat. What I'll do is I'll probably keep the wire in the puddle as I move across, but every time I get to an edge, I might give a little bit of a push, a little bit of a shove in there so that I make sure that I put enough metal as to not have too flat of a root. And as we come off that bottom where the gap is still wide, we still have a really bad gap. 
But now we have even worse of an issue with high load. This pipe is further away than the tungsten than this pipe here. So I really gotta make an effort and have enough tungsten stick out to reach that right side, fuse to it, and still be able to come up without smashing my tungsten because now I'm really close to this bevel edge that's a lot closer to me. And as you start getting up towards the top, it's not so bad. We might cut it open and we might turn our amps up, but the top's not gonna be the problem. It's gonna be these sides. We've got a lot of stick out, probably close to 30 CFH on our argon flow. We're gonna freehand this bottom here. Here we go. You wanna first start by getting the edge of whatever tack is there molten. If you don't, then you're gonna leave some incomplete fusion. And really this isn't too bad. It seems to be doing just fine. The gap's not the issue. A little bit of that high-low. So again, the method here that I'm trying to do is keep the wire in the puddle Float it there. You need a sticky puddle at 90 amps. It's kind of sticky. And we want to freehand and kind of point our arc back on the weld and not in front of us at our wire. And then just feed into those corners. The bottom is going to be the toughest part to get reinforcement. So the biggest thing that you do here is that you put enough metal in there especially with such a wide gap. But I'd much rather a wide gap than a tight gap. If it's tight, I'm usually gonna just take a grinder and open it up. And I've never actually been a fan of freehanding pipe. You know, as long as it's in an open area, like this one's in an open area, or it doesn't have a terrible fit up, that's typically what I'll do is just walk the cup from bottom to top. In this case, free is kind of easier to be able to maintain your arc length when you're coming up this side on all those different edges. Now we're just kind of dipping the sides. The thing with this is the reinforcement's going to happen on the side. It's just going to it's just going to come natural to be reinforced. So you don't have to try too hard as far as pushing any wire. But the important thing that we try to do here, I might even have to cut that tack out because it's starting to get in my way. Yeah, we're going to have to cut that tack out. A little bit of that 3M Cubitron 3 cutoff wheel action, get removed this top. Now one thing I'll give you as far as a piece of advice as far as removing tack on carbon steel, uh, you can cut it all the way out. You really can. You can cut straight through it. But now you're going to have little sharp burrs and stuff. Just make sure that you consume those burrs. Um, I like to just get them really thin, eat up that little bit of a tack, put it into my weld and just keep trucking. Now what all I've done here is just kind of feather it down. I'm going to end up using that tack as part of my root. Before it was high and heavy and I couldn't get to the feathered, the tie-in portion of it without making a mess. Now it's thin enough when I tie into the bottom of it, I'm just gonna remove my wire. That metal from that tack is gonna start to drop. Hit that spot once it drops, I can get my wire back in and I'm clear to go all the way to the top. So here we go, we're coming up to this tack. And all I'm doing is feeding a good a little bit on that right side and then just kind of washing it over. This 95 amps is, I don't know, it's chill. Got a little bit of trash in that tack. But all I'm doing, just making sure I tie into both edges. Got a little nasty tungsten, but all I'm doing is eating that tack up. Wasn't much metal there. No burrs. Just is just so thin, it's just gonna get ate up by my arc. Now my tungsten is pretty thrashed right now from in the little pocket. Let's flop that over. Now the one thing about stopping in the middle of your route is you typically will leave what's called a fish eye. And it's a little tiny hole. A little hole is just that puddle didn't have time to solidify. So when you restart, just be sure you put enough heat and remelt that stop so that that 
fish eye or that little hole remelts and fuses all back together or pull out on your bevels. Pipe fitters need heroes too. So we're gonna kind of rip this top open a little bit because the way it is now, it being so tight, I'm not gonna be able to get a lot of bead in it unless I turn it way up and push hard and it's going in good with a wide gap. So let's make a wide gap. Now there is a method to this madness. I'm really only trying to aim for this bevel here. It could be this bevel, it could be this bevel. I'm just picking this one. Um, and all I'm doing is making enough room, trimming this side back, and then I'll come in with the cutoff wheel at a little bit of an angle to kind of give it a little bit of a fade and blend it in to kind of give back that knife edge. Because once you rip it open, you're leaving yourself a land and you're gonna need more amperage in order to tie into that flat land. Now, if you have access to the side of the pipe and you can get in there and remove the burrs by hand or with a little hand tool from the outside, good. That's not always the case. So I usually use like a reciprocating saw blade, you know, on a sawzall, and I'll get in there and bend it and kind of go up the inside. You can kind of come at it with your wire, but what's important now is we have a lot more room for my filler metal, and I should be able to finish this weld now that I've ripped it open. Once we got that ripped open, we can continue with our normal scheduled programming. One thing to be aware of when you rip open a pipe, like I said, you got a, a, a bit of a rounded edge. It's usually not as nice as a nice prep piece of pipe. The bevel's not the same shape. And sometimes there's burrs. So what I'll do is I'll go over to that side, that right side. And before I add any wire, I make sure that arc eats up anything sitting off to the side there so that we're just sitting pretty now gaps getting a lot tighter which is nice but i'm still going with this kind of keyhole dip technique because of the high low and the fact that we ripped open that right side i'm going to just make sure that that right side gets all the arc love and then that left side being that it has a nice thin edge, we just need to make sure we get some metal over to it. It'll tie in. The worst part about ripping open a piece of pipe like that is whenever you think you got it, you don't eat up a burr or you don't fuse all the way. Um, and now you've got incomplete fusion on the back side of your root. I'm going to be honest, this 95 amps is not cutting it for me anymore. So... There we go. 115, you'll, you'll notice when you bump up your amps, it's not super significant. You're not like, oh my gosh, I'm about to fall out. It's just doing the same thing. You might need to just scooch a little faster, but it honestly welds a lot better, smoother, consistent, flatter. All the good stuff comes from amperage. I'm still opting to do this keyhole and dip technique. One important thing to do while you're doing this is try not to let your welding wire get too far out of your gas coverage or out at all you really want to kind of leave it in there that way it doesn't come in with some oxidation and nasty stuff but you can still opt for this keyhole i usually like to do this keyhole when i get to attack i'll kind of open it up with the arc dip feed a little bit open it up with the arc it's almost like ripping open a weld with a grinder, except with your art. Use my phone real quick for this. Here's the root. This was the gap. You know, uneven, high, low, all that good stuff. This is the root from the outside. You can see that bee's just completely lopsided from the high, low. And it just looks so wide because the gap was wide. And then once it gets tighter, it started to weld pretty easily. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's the bottom of our bead. Maybe a little bit of cold wire right there. Fused all the way up. The point is we've got a little bit of a, that's what we got to fix whenever we get to the top on the other side, how that blends in. But other than that, 
got a little bit of a high spot from that cutout section. And it's just, you can't see the bead from that way just of how lopsided that whole thing is. Look at that. But it's, it's all fused. Well, I thought I was gonna get away with running the same amperage, but we were at 115. We're gonna go back to 95 where we started on the bottom side. We already ripped open with the grinder and that 3M cutoff wheel in order to open it back up just as we did this side in order to do exactly the same thing, uh, but just on the other side. 5G is not too bad, it's the same weld. Just uh, wish we had something to kind of rest on on this side, we might clamp something there, but just see if we could put a bead in a little faster without all those starts and stops and moving cameras and blah, 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 blah. Let's beat it. This side went a little bit easier, I want to say. There's the bottom. The side, this freaking bead is just facing us at this point. We're gonna try to blend everything a little bit better on a hot pass. Let's hot pass it real quick. I appreciate you guys for watching this episode. I had a fun time doing something that's uh, more my speed as far as welding goes. If you're in school and you're working, you should really be focusing on your prep and your fit up, making sure that those are perfect because it makes your welds a lot easier to weld. That being said, if you do prep and tack together a coupon and it's not perfect, weld it anyway, see what happens, at least put the bead in it. If you're in the field and you walk up on a weld like this, I would say, mm -mm, no way, not me. Go ahead and call QC, we'll see if he says it's okay because you don't have to buy the weld. If it's a bad fit and it's gonna go against your record if something comes up bad, then you have the right to say something. Now, if QC comes by, they would never buy this fit, by the way. I don't, it's nowhere I've ever worked would ever buy this fit. But if QC comes by and says, hey man, can you, will you? Show them what daddy can do. We'll see you on the next weld.